Welcome, everybody. You just entered into the winning zone. Winning zone. Winning zone. Today, I will be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I am ready to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same in Jesus name. Amen. You just entered into the winning zone. Winning zone. Winning zone.
Like Jehovah, there's no God like that. Sing it with me. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God like Jehovah.
great God. He really is a 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 great God. to be in your presence. You really are a good God. That's who you are. You're so awesome. Oh, I wouldn't want another God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your kindness and your favor and your love, your protection, your provision, your everything. You're more than enough. You're more than enough. Oh, Father, we're so honored today that we can call on you and you are present. We're so honored today, Lord, that we don't have to look left or look right. We know, Father, that right where we're standing, wherever we are, in whatever situation, you are present. We're so honored to be your children. 
to be your representative here on the earth at such a time as this. This is such a time, Father God, that we declare that we'll shine bright and we'll do what thus says the Lord and we'll show up. Hallelujah. And we will, yes. we will deliver life to people that are dying. And we will not make excuses. Hallelujah. But we will be who you've called us to be. Yes. Yes, Lord. And we are greater because the greater one lives on the inside of us. And we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity that you've given us. Thank you. And thank you, Father God, that when we show up, we know that you show up in us and with yeah. us and for us. So no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So why? Why fear? Why doubt? Father, thank you. Thank you so much. And Father, as we come together, and I pray for those that are hurting and those that are broken and those that are sad and those that have no hope. Father, touch their hearts right now, Lord, in the presence of wherever they are. Show up in their lives. Send laborers across their path. Do supernatural. Do what you are famous for. And that is touching and changing lives, doing miraculous things. And Father, we just thank you today. We honor you and bless your name. And may we receive the uncompromising word that will come forth today. And may it, may it charge us even greater to go forth. And thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's all we can say is thank you. Because you're so good to us. And we honor you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Welcome Summit Church. Welcome Church Online, Summit Nation. Good morning. What an honor. What an honor. I want to share in Hebrews 10 and 25. And it says, not forsaking our own assembling together as the custom of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day drawing nigh. And we've all said before here, uh, Pastor and myself and praise team, others, you know, that this, where we are today has not taken God by surprise. It's no surprise to God. And then I read this scripture and I'm saying, you know, but we've been separated in a form of staying from the building and doing church online, which is amazing, right? Because we've never stopped. Because church isn't the building, right? And so that's so awesome. So we are coming together and we are um, doing that. And then I think about, like, sometimes in, our, in, in situations that it's important that we don't allow the enemy to keep us in a place of separation. Because when you allow yourself to get into that place of separation, then you're no longer connecting and you're no longer assembling yourselves. And so, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this scripture to lead into this because this is what was so powerful to me this week. Bear with me, please. Like, we don't know um, people's situations. And I think about the gentleman that we all those of us that are moviegoers and superhero fans think, you know, we lost such a great talent this week. Chad with Boston, right? But what spoke to me about his life is that this dude, this guy, he showed up to record when he was diagnosed. He showed up to do his purpose. He showed up because he knew it was bigger than him. He knew the lives that he would touch. He knew the little kids that would admire. 
feet go forth. And I declare today. And I ask you to touch those that God has assigned you to touch by just showing up. What is your purpose? Stop the excuses. I bet he was in pain at some point. Go forth in your pain and know that God is there to do what he needs to do through you. We can't keep making excuses. The enemy has thrown an all-out assault on the body of Christ. And you're going to stay home with your gifts and your talents. And I'm not throwing darts. I'm throwing hope. Keep your hope alive. Know that the greater one is greater than your circumstances. And when we show up, when we show up, man, look what lives you can touch. Look at the lives that he touched because he showed up to do what he set out to do. And I know we don't know him, but we came and fell in love with the character. With, 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 the, with the assignment. And so what is your assignment? Yeah. Do your assignment. And let God take care of the other stuff. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So Summit Church, we have an assignment. Yeah. We have an assignment. And I want to encourage you to do your assignment. Show up. We're better together. Yeah. We, can do, we can't do this without you. Yeah. And so as we come together... Know that we're touching lives. We're encouraging somebody to go further, to do what God has called them to do. Know that you're loved. And I celebrate you. Pastor and I celebrate you. We love you. We know that we are here on this earth right now doing what we're doing for such a time as this. So let's go forth and let's do it with all the superhero power or whatever else it is that you need to push you to do it. Just do it. Show up. Your love, your love, your love. Stay tuned for some more amazing praise and worship. And I'm telling you, man, I I am so, I'm like, if you tried to convince me with anything other than what God says, I just can't hear it. I cannot hear it. And I'm not going to. I mean, the mission is too much, it's too important. So let's go forth. Let's do life. Let's enter into worship. Let's praise God. Let's give him our all because he's given us his all. Let's go. Hallelujah. That's good. Hallelujah. Thank you. You're more than enough. 
God's not mad at you. I want you to just receive him, receive his love right now. Amen. Give me some more on that saxophone. That sounds so good. I want to hear a little bit more of that. Amen. He's not mad at you. us madly. Amen. Well, we're going to move into uh, our giving part of our worship service, and we invite you to participate and um, as the Lord places on your heart. For those of you that are present, 
um, please avail yourself to the giving containers on the side of the uh, sound studio. And those of you that are viewing online, we do have many ways that you can give. You can text to give. You can also download the Summit app. And as you walk through the prompts, we want to encourage you, if you would, please use the um, banking account giving opposed to your credit card. And so that would help us tremendously. But we thank you for whatever amount you choose to give. And we know that God is faithful and he provides. Amen. So let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for giving us seed to sow and bread for our food and multiplying our seed sown. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you watch over your word to perform it. And your word says that you meet all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we declare that every need of the ministry is met. We believe that you give us seed to sow. Father, those that are here, those that are watching, those that you placed on their hearts to give. And we thank you, Lord, that you provide. And we thank you, Lord. Where there's vision, there is provision. And Father, I thank you. I believe and connect myself with those believing as they sow, that every need is met and that they're debt free and that they have more in abundance so that they can continue, so that we can continue to be a blessing to those around us. Not just to get for ourselves, Lord, but to be a blessing. And we thank you. Your word said it is more, is more blessing to give than to receive. And Father God, as we get we will give, and we thank you for it. We open our hearts, we open our hands so that we can receive and give back. We honor you today and give you praise and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 So stay tuned for some powerful, powerful words, and as you know, what's going to come forth is our man of God, my husband, in teaching an amazing, I'm sorry, my amazing husband teaching an amazing word. So stay tuned. Amen. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Welcome, Summit Nation. Thank you, Lord. Summit family, guests. Uh, I want to encourage you wherever you're watching. Um, actually, we're on probably one, two, three, four different places today. We're on YouTube. And if you're watching on YouTube, click the subscribe button. That helps us hit the like button. Also, to get notified whenever we go on, we're on YouTube during the week. If you want to get notified, please click that 
little bell and you'll get alerted when we go online. We're also on um, the Al Jennings Facebook page. We're on the Summit Church Facebook page as normal. And we're on the summit.churchonline.org platform. So we're on several places. So um, wherever you're watching, tell people where you're watching. And let's get more people connected so they can get impacted by the life-changing message of Jesus Christ and his finished work. Let's spread the news that God is madly in love with you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He sees you. Wherever you are, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, and he loves you. And God's love for you is unconditional. How does God see you? He sees you in Christ, accepted, approved. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God is well pleased with you, not on the basis of your obedience, but on the basis of his obedience. Yes. Glory to God. Thank Let's God. just give God praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love for us, Lord. I want to encourage you, wherever you're watching, to dial in, lean in, lock in. You know, in sports, there's a, a mode that they get in. Carla likes to call it, they put their game face on. And as I was watching the NBA playoffs, I'm, I'm thinking about that right now, when they, they're getting ready for the, the, the opening tip. Those guys, you know, they're slapping hands and doing a little dances and things like that. But they get out there and get ready for the tip-off. They are, are dialed in. They're not thinking about what they're going to eat afterwards, right? They're locked in and they're dialed in. Well, how much more should we be dialed in when we're ready to receive the Word of God? The Holy Spirit, it's not just me teaching. The Holy Spirit will share with you things about what I'm saying. But you need to be locked in. And so I encourage you to get rid of all the distractions and um, don't multitask, check and text messages. And if you're going to uh, do anything, share this with somebody else. Amen. Let's get focused on the job at hand. Amen. Receiving the word. And then... You, every week, I want to challenge you to be a blessing to somebody else by sharing this message. Amen? All right. I want to share with you, before I get into the, the main course for today, I want to give you an appetizer. 1 Peter 5, 6. This came to me this morning. It says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time, he may exalt you. See, what you're doing right now, no matter where, where you're watching, and I know um, somebody, I think it was Allison last week, commented that everybody's circumstances are different. I don't know what your circumstances are, and um, there, there are those that watch online, and uh, they need to do so at that time. I don't know what the circumstances are, but we understand. And so nobody's condemning you. Uh, when Carla was talking about showing up, she wasn't talking about, well, you need to be here, you need to stop uh, uh, staying at home. She was, that's not what she was referring to. She's talking about your assignment. Show up for your assignment. And we do need people here. <laughs> okay, we do need people here. And so we, uh, and sit, having said that, Anybody who wants to help us, volunteer, in music ministry, maybe you play an instrument, you sing, uh, maybe you like to get involved with tech stuff, and we got a lot of tech stuff around here that you can put your hands on and, and be a blessing, uh, learn some new tools and be a blessing at the same time. So we encourage you to do that. But those of you that are staying home and watching, we're glad that you're watching. And you, you're just as much a Summit family as, uh, as anybody who came here and showed up physically. So I want you to know the, the physical house is open, though, all right? And um, online is open. So 
get in wherever you can fit in. And just wherever you're watching from, because you can be right here physically and zone out on us. Okay? So, but, but I, want, I want to encourage you to just dial in, okay? And when you're doing this, when, when, you're, when you're focused on the Word, you're humbling yourself. Not just on Sunday morning, not just on Wednesday, Wednesday night. And I'll also, let me share with you, we have Wednesday night Bible class at 7 o'clock. We encourage you to come to that. We have Wednesday morning prayer, 737, okay? Um, but what does it mean to humble yourself? See, you, you are submitting yourself to the Word of God. You're submitting yourself to the Word of Jesus, Thank you, Lord. You're saying, not, not my will, but his be done. Thank you, Jesus. And so, receive the correction. When the word corrects you, it's always for your profit. It's always out of a, out of a motive of love. Amen? Amen? So, receive the word. When you receive the word in your, in your daily time, when, when you're here on Sundays, when, whenever you go to the Word of God, don't go to the Word thinking you know everything. And I've learned a lot over the years, as many of you have. But we never get to the place where we know everything. Be willing to be corrected. And see, when you're doing that, you're humbling yourself. There's, there's things that I've made a change and an and adjustment in, things that I had believed for years, but the Word corrected me and showed me something different. And I went with what I saw. And I can't unsee what I see. See? And when, when you see the Word, when, that's why I always point you to the Word, because when you humble yourself in that way, Amen. And submit yourself to the word. I mean, I tell you what, your life will change. You're, you're being pliable. You're being flexible. You're willing. You're not saying, I know everything. I've learned a lot, but I, I don't know everything. Yeah. Do you? No. no, you don't even have to answer that, really, because none of us know everything. But some people act as though they do. And... The opposite of humility is pride. And do you, do you know there are some people that really cannot, even when they see something, because they've always taught something. There's pastors who always taught a certain thing, and they see something different, but they won't change because of pride. Because they would have to say, what? I was wrong. And I've done that. Well, does that hurt, pastor? No. Didn't, doesn't hurt me. I just want to be right. Huh? See, when you understand that, you're, that, that none of us are perfect, why should it hurt? You just learned something new. Thank you, Lord. I mean, if you're trying to get to Michigan and you're on I-69, um, those of you that are in Indiana understand this, if you're on 69 South, how many of you know you're not going to get to Michigan? But once you're heading in that direction, if somebody says, you know what, maybe somebody in the back seat, they say, I, I don't think we're going right. <laughs> and then you look, at, you look on your phone, you look at, on the GPS, of course not you, the person in the back, because you're not supposed to be on your phone, it's against the law now. But you're, you discover that you're going the wrong way. So what are you going to do? Get off the exit and head up 69 North. Now, you might feel some kind of way that you wasted some time. But hey, you're happy because now you know you're going in the right direction and you're going to get to your destination. Thank you, Lord. If you want to be where God wants you to be, keep being humble. And when he shows you something different, go with it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. So, uh, anyway, that's the appetizer.
the main course. Don't worry and don't be afraid. How many of you know you can be afraid today if you want to? Worry and fear come from the outside. Let's just dive right in. In Matthew chapter 6, we looked at this last week. I just want to call, bring this to your remembrance. Um, you can go refer to your app. We have a Summit Church app available on Android and Apple, so if uh, iOS and Android. So if you go to your app store, search for Summit Church Indiana, grab the Summit Church app, click the icon that says Sunday morning, and in that Sunday morning app, there's message notes, and you can see the notes for today, at least what I plan to share for today, so you can see those scriptures. Amen? Okay, so we looked at last week, Matthew 6, 25, and Jesus said, don't worry about your life. Everybody say, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about your life. Well, that's New King James. ESV says, do not be anxious about your life. Say, do not be anxious about your life. Now, I want to share this with you. God will never require you to do something that you don't have the ability to do. God would be unjust to say don't worry if it wasn't possible to not worry. Did I say that right? <laughs> okay. So it's possible for us not to worry. Say possible. Now, in the natural, with men, see, if you lean in on the natural, it's, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. We have a new nature. Because <clears throat> in times like these, people will tell you stuff about, now, let me, let, me, let me frame it for you, okay, help you to see the word. Okay, we worry people, right? Yes. Remember what I said about humbling yourself. Now, I'm going to say something that's going to sound, this is not going to be natural, and it's not going to make sense. But how many of you know faith is the opposite of sense? We walk by faith, not by our senses. The Bible tells us not to worry, amen? I said the Bible says not to worry, amen? amen. So, is it possible for us not to worry? Why? Because Jesus said it. Worry, and, and he also says, we'll look at this today, God has not given us a spirit that makes us afraid. Yes. Worry and fear come from the outside. I'm teaching here. Yes. Worry and fear come from the outside. Amen? Amen? Who do you think is behind fear? The enemy. It's not of God. It's of, of the enemy. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. And so worry is not good, is it? And we know it can't come from God because God tells us not to worry. We know fear is not of God because the Bible tells us, and we'll show, show this to you if you haven't seen it before, God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of self-control. Another translation says, and of a sound mind, all right? So worry and fear come from the outside. It's possible for us not to worry. We are instructed not to worry. So what are we going to do? Not worry. Worry comes from? The enemy. Are you sure about that? Yes. Now, I'm not making this stuff up. I'm giving you scripture for it, right? We know it's not from the enemy, right? I said that wrong. See, good. You're listening. What did, what did I say? Huh? I said, what's not from the enemy? Fear is not from the enemy. But that's wrong. What I just said is wrong. See, that's why you can't just take a something the preacher says. Because sometimes we mean to say something, but we say something else. That's why it's important to listen. And you're listening. Amen. Some of you yelling at me uh, at home. <laughs> Good. You're listening. Doesn't come from, from, uh, doesn't come from God, right? Okay. Fear, worry, doesn't come from God. Okay. You sure about that? Are you convinced? Yes. Are you fully persuaded? See, faith is being fully, be, being fully convinced.
We looked at a scripture, and we'll look at it again. Uh, matter of fact, let, let's just jump, jump to this. I'm framing something for you because I'm about to say something. Like my, my friend, good friend Stephen Watt, he said, I'm about to say something. Because it's easy to fall in a trap. You've got to watch what you say. Jesus said you have what you say. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And sometimes people can say stuff to you, and then you begin to agree with something. Now, they don't have the information you have. When they, they start spewing out things that are not according to the Word of God. See? And so it's important for us to speak the same thing. That's what confession means. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 10.23 to hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. So confession in the Bible means to say the same thing. Say the same thing that God says. So when somebody says something to you and it doesn't line up, don't say, yeah, I know what you mean. Philippians 4 Do not be anxious about what? Anything. anything. But in everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. I don't want to look this up myself, uh, but um, somebody tell me what it says in the Amplified Bible. Some of you Bible scholars out there, you don't have to be a scholar. Just look it up, actually. I'm going to, while you're doing that, I'm going to look it up. You can shout it out at me. Um, do not be anxious. Anxious, worry basically mean the same thing. Philippians, y'all should have that by now. You got these smartphones. Just to, that first phrase, do not be, what does it say? That's good. That's good enough. That first phrase, do not be what? Do not be anxious or worried about what? Anything. Anything good. That's the word I was looking for, worry, because I want you to see that worry is included. Worry, anxiety basically means the same thing. So do not be anxious about anything. Now, what does, again, don't take stuff because the preacher says it. Make sure you can find it in the word for yourself. What does anything leave out? So is there anything to worry about? Hmm? Now, see, what we've got to do, this is not just for Sunday, and you leave here and forget it. The word is like a mirror. We look into the mirror. See, the, uh, it tells us in James, I'm paraphrasing, if, if somebody looks into the perfect law of liberty, and or it says, be doer of be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. If you're just a hearer, you're like a man who looks in the mirror, who walks away and forget what manner of man he is. And, and he talks about continuing in the perfect law of liberty, not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. The word is work. Amen. We need to work the word, integrate the word into our lives. And, and you don't really have to force it. It'll just be natural. And this is when, this is when you know, oh, man, I got to do the word. I got to. No, it's not like that. When, once you absorb the word of God and internalize it by meditating in it, you just, it'll just be a reflex reaction. This is how you know when the word is in you. You know the word is in you when the word talks to you. When somebody says something negative or contrary, the word starts talking to you. And say, don't, don't agree with that. And then the word will start telling you the opposite. I'm going to give you an example right now because I'm about to say something. Is it anything to worry about? Be anxious and worried about what? Nothing. That's the opposite of anything. No, there's nothing. There's nothing to worry about. Anybody have kids? 
Anybody have young kids? Anybody out there? You got small kids, huh? You go to, they go to the playground. They, you leave, you, they go to school. You're not with them all the time, so don't worry about them. And God tells us what to do about worry, and, we, we, uh, and, and I'll show you that. But what if somebody tells you, well, you know you got, you got to worry about your kids being shot by the police. I'm just worried about, uh, uh, I'm just, we need to be worried about our, our young children. More specifically, we need to be worried about our black boys, our black young men. We need to be worried about that. Anybody ever heard that in the last few weeks, months, years? What say of you? Except you worry, don't worry about nothing except that. Now, we need to worry about that. Now, by, now, 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 Pastor, you know, I understand, I understand that Bible stuff, but we talking about the real world. What do you think, what do you think I'm up here every week doing? This, this stuff is real world stuff. We are not natural. In the natural, there's all kinds of reasons to be afraid. But some of y'all disconnect. You disconnect when it comes to stuff like that, and people say to you, man, we need to be, be afraid about, about our, our boys, about our children, about our grandchildren. They say, yeah, you sure you're right? You sure you're right about that? What's talking to you? And it's symptomatic when nothing's talking to you. And when you reverse engineer it, the word not in you. Not the way it should be. Because see, who do you think wants us to worry and be afraid? Where do you think it's coming from? See, those words, you got to understand, it's not the people that say it. I know you've never said nothing stupid like that. But you've heard it said. I apologize. I shouldn't say stupid. Because some, some people, they just don't have the information. They don't know what else to say. But thank God we got inside information. When you see something, you can't unsee it. You can't talk me out of it. We got promises, folks. What you're saying, when you yield to it, there's a reason to be afraid because of what's happening in, 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 in these here streets. You, 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 you are saying that there's something that is impossible with God, that there's something that's too hard for him to keep your kids. That's too hard. But the Bible says, is there anything too hard for the Lord? I just believe that he can keep my kids. And I'm not ashamed of this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God. Woo, hallelujah, I feel like shouting up in here. It's the power of God to deliverance. I speak blessing over your children and over your grandchildren. Thank you, Lord. I speak peace over them. I declare that no evil shall befall them. Thank you, Lord. Nor no plague will come near their dwelling in the name of Jesus. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Pastor, I tell you, it's happening all over. A thousand may fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand. But can you even allow that to come out of your mouth? It shall not come near me. There is no asterisk on these scriptures. Say, God, God will, never ask me will never ask me to do something, to do something that, I'm not able to do. that I'm not able to do. 
I am able not to worry. Do not be anxious about anything. And it's just not, this is not talking about letting your mind go blank. You got to make some deposits. When you make deposits, you can make some withdrawals. And when you're saying these things, you're not saying them because pastor said it. It's out of the abundance of your heart. (laughs) Your mouth speaks. Whatever is in your heart in abundance is going to come out of your mouth. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything. But in everything. By prayer. We're going to give you a prayer. And supplication with thanksgiving. Be thankful. I mean, be thankful that it shall not come near you. Be thankful that he watches over. Be, be thankful. Have you, were you protected this week? Be thankful. Are you healed? Be thankful. Is God blessing you? Be thankful. In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And when you do that, what happens? You're at peace. God always wants us to be at peace. See, peace is not the absence of adversity. You can have peace in the middle of the storm like Jesus did when he was asleep in the back of the boat when there was a storm. They woke him up, didn't they? Master, we perish. He didn't say nothing about perishing. He said, go to the other side. And he went to sleep. He rebuked the storm. He said, you know, where's your faith, y'all? Come on. See, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. See, this peace of God, it, it, uh, one translation says, Amplified, I believe, says this peace will act like an umpire. An umpire in baseball calls the balls and strikes. They have umpires in football. They're like a referee. See, this peace will be in your heart like a referee. When somebody says, you ought to be worried, the peace is like, no. (laughs) No. Out of bounds. That's out of bounds. Peace. Guard your hearts and mind. Huh? Paul said, put on the helmet of salvation. Salvation is all inclusive. It means deliverance, preservation, healing, safety, soundness, prosperity. So you put that helmet on your mind. Got to protect yourself. You got to protect yourself, y'all. Thank you, Lord. We're in the light. That's where we are. We're in the light. We're not in darkness. We're in the light. Darkness can't mess with the light. People with evil intentions coming towards you, it will not come near you, y'all. You're in the light. See, you, you, but you've got to build that word up. My son, attend to my word, Proverbs 4. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep this word in the midst of your heart. For it's life. See, the word is life. It is light. See, what are you feeding on? If this is hard for you to hear, rewind, go back over what you have been feeding on. Remember what I said last week? It's hard when you've been nothing nothing but feeding on bad news and you come and look at me like I'm crazy on Sunday. Like I'm not preaching good news. I know this is good news actually. But what are you feeding on? What are you consuming? What are you internalizing? What are you meditating on? This Peace will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And I love verse 8. A lot of people leave out verse 8. We left off here. 
So um, verse 8, finally, brothers, whatever is true. See, this is what we should fix our minds on. Everybody say, fix your mind. Brother Hagin used to say this, if it doesn't fit into these, this criteria here, it doesn't qualify for you to think about. I mean, it needs to fit all the criteria. Not just, well, it, whatever is true. That's right, it's true. I'm going I'm to say it. A lot of the bad news is true, but you know what? It's not honorable. It just can't be true to qualify for what we should be thinking about. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. I'm not saying we shouldn't keep abreast on, on, on what's happening. But what I'm saying is you have to understand you, you, your, your mind should be fixed on the word of God. It should not come near me. God is protecting me. The Lord is on my side. And because God is for me, who can be against me? Nay, in all these things, I am more. <laughs> I'm more than a conqueror. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I've already won. Yes. What does it mean to be more than a conqueror? I, li I like the illustration. That, um, I share this a lot. You have a prize fighter that fights. I mean, they go through some intense training let's say for a heavyweight fight or the middleweight championship of the world, man, they go through all kinds of jump rope and hitting a bag, lifting weights and, or whatever they do and uh, running early, getting up early in the morning, crack of dawn and running. Sometimes people with cars going behind them and encouraging them to get ready for that fight. And they spend all this training, maybe nine months, and then it comes time for the fight. And they're fighting for the championship of the world, and then they knock out their opponent in the fourth round. And then the, the uh, referee comes in, umpire, or whatever you call me, and he holds their, holds their hand up in the air. They're the heavyweight champion of the world. They give them a big old belt. I love them belts that they give them, <laughs> right, Jeff? They put them belts on them, and then uh, they get a big check. The mighty conqueror, amen. He gets his check, gets home, gives it to his wife, amen. and she's more than a conqueror <laughs> because he did all the work. But she got the benefit. Yeah. He was the conqueror. Yeah. But his wife is more than a conqueror. Yeah. How many of you know in Christ Jesus we are more than a conqueror? Yeah. Because Jesus did all the work on the cross. Yeah. And we're the beneficiaries of all he's done. Yeah. 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 Yes, I am. Ooh, hallelujah. Man, when that word is in you, it's going to talk to you. Now, remember what I said about humility. It might cut a little bit to some folk, and they, they, but it can be a wake-up call. Look, I need, to, I need to be spending more time here in the Word of God. I need to watch what I'm feeding on. Or you can say, oh, pastor talking about me. <laughs> Who else do you think I'm talking about? Amen. And somebody said, if you throw a bunch of rocks in the midst of, if you throw a rock in the middle of a bunch of dogs, the only one that hollers is the one that get hit. <laughs> Amen. And y'all know me. See, you got to know, this is a, a, a message. This is a family message because I want and for anybody else who, who can receive it. But y'all know my heart. You know, this is for your prophet. It's not just to say, oh, he sure did tell you. 
He sure did straighten you out. It ain't about that. It's about getting you on point where you can receive the provision of protection and victory that God has for you that's already yours, but, but you've got to be able to receive it. And that's where it comes to humbling you. Yeah. Yeah. You just make a correction and go about your business and, and don't say nothing. <laughs> Amen. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? It's, just, it's, no, it's no big deal. Whatever is true, whatever honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is, if there is any what? Excellence. Man, we need to be people of excellence. Whatever you do, do it like even on the job. Well, my boss, he ain't even saved. But you're not working under him. You're working unto the Lord and do your work with excellence. And God will promote you. See, some people miss it because there are most people, I won't say most people, but there are a lot of people that are lazy on the job, and most people do do just enough and nothing more. See, when the Holy Spirit, when you begin to follow the Holy Spirit, he'll show you stuff to do on a job. He'll say, okay, do this. This is extra. And some people just dismiss it because, what are you talking about? It's 4.30. It's time for me to go home. And because some people are not in tune with the Holy Spirit, they miss when he's showing them. He's really setting them up for promotion. He's giving you extra things to do that's going to bring value to that company. And I tell you what, when people are, are cutting back th these days and, and they're... they're, they're Streamlining stuff. People, they're not going to let go of folks that are valuable to the company. That's bringing value. The first people to go are, are the people that don't do nothing or they just barely do some stuff. Do just enough. Make yourself valuable. Think about on the job, is this what I'm doing? Is it of excellence? If there's anything worthy of praise. See, stuff might be true, but is it worthy of praise? These are the things that we think about. First Peter. Where does the time go? Goodness. So, Lord, if we don't worry, what are we supposed to do? I'm glad you asked that question. See, God just doesn't tell us not to worry. He tells us what to do about it. Casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, not some of them, all of them, all your worries, all your concerns. Is anybody... I mean, am I talking to the right group? Has anybody been tempted to worry? I mean, we've all been, we've all been tempted to worry. But, okay, so we have a, we're faced with a choice. He didn't say cast some of them out. Lord, I can, you know what? I can, I can handle some of this stuff. Some of this, it's just too much. It's, this, this, this extra stuff I can't deal with. I'm just going to give some of it to you. No, you got to give it all to him. The whole of it, I love it, the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all. That doesn't mean give it to them, take it back. Sometimes we got a little back and forth stuff going on. I've been there. On occasion, I do it. I'll be honest, I mean... Sometimes I give it to him, but I take it back. But he says, but when you recognize it again. Amen. I mean, if you're in, in, in fear, acknowledge it. I mean, don't be ashamed. I'm, okay, I'm in fear. Like somebody, God, didn't give me. I mean, they're all up in fear, all up in fear. 
God doesn't give me a spirit of fear. God doesn't give me a fear. I know God didn't give it to you, but where'd you get it from? <laughs> I mean, because you got it. <laughs> and see, just because you say the scripture doesn't mean you don't have it. Acknowledge when you have it. Okay, and we can deal with it. We can get rid of it. But acknowledge when you're in fear. You know what? I'm, I'm being fearful right now. Now, you might have symptoms of it. Once you reject the fear, your, your knees might still be shaking. But just hold your confession. Release that fear. And then eventually that peace will come upon you. Casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your concerns, all your worries, once and for all on him for what he cares for you. See, he handles it. He cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. You've got a, a problem child, a problem youth, somebody that's really not following the word of God. They're not living according to the word. That's not fun. Little Johnny is hanging around with the wrong people, on drugs, living life with the hogs. Well, how do you pray for Johnny? Father, I cast all of my worries, all of my concerns about Johnny on you, all my anxieties, all my worries, all my concerns about Johnny, I cast me into the throat. I throw them all on you, Father. Lord, I've been worried about Johnny. But Lord, I'm <clears throat> I've been stressed out. But Father, right now, I cast the whole of my care, all of my anxieties, all of my worry about Johnny over on you. For you care for me affectionately. And you care about me watchfully. Amen. Amen. It's that simple. Now, when you do that, guess what? Johnny is God's problem. Johnny's not my problem. Houston, you got a problem. God, you got a problem. But I know you can take care of it. You got the problem. Woo! Imagine me if I, um, you see me on the way to church, and I got some television equipment, some new equipment, not television equipment, media equipment. I got a camera. I got some tripods, and they're on my back. And you see me, I'm on my way. And you, you ride in your car, and you, you're like, wait a minute. I know I'm not seeing things. That looks like Pastor Al over there. So I, you pull up, and you see me with that heavy load on my back. I said, Pastor, what are you doing with all that? Well, I'm taking it over to the church. He said, well, can I help you? Oh, that would be wonderful. And so you get out of your car, and you take this load off my back. You take the tripod, you take the cameras, you take all this heavy equipment, and you take it off my back, and you put it in your car. And uh, I said, okay, so I want you to go ahead and take it. Go, on, go ahead. I'll, I'll just continue to walk, but just if you take it to the church for me, I'd appreciate that. And then you go on about your business. You're on your way to church. Now, Am I going to continue to walk like this? <laughs> Why am I walking like this? I'm acting like I got the problem. I, I'm acting like I got the equipment. See, and that's what a lot of people do when they cast their care on the Lord. Lord, I, 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 it, 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 they give their burdens to the Lord. They give their cares, worries, anxieties to the Lord. But then they, then they go a hunch down walking. And they walk like they still got it. Let him have it and let it go. Some folk worry about what other people say about them. Just tell the Lord. Now, if it bothers you, it bothers you. It's not fun to have people talk about you, lie on you, say unkind things about you. Is that fun? No. 
Remember, you don't wrestle against flesh and blood. How many of you have you ever experienced that somebody just decided not to like you? They don't know anything about you, but they have made a decision that they don't like you. Never had a conversation with you. Huh? Sometimes they, they, just, they just got to look. Even that you, can, you can see it even with their mask on. They're looking at you. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> They're hating on you with their eyes. <laughs> but seriously, though, have you had, had, had somebody, they, they just decided that they were just going to be against you? It's not them. That's the enemy. So what, what you do is just, you, you take that person to the Lord, I give, I give Leslie to you. Now, if your name is Leslie, don't, I'm not talking about you. I don't just... First name popped in my head. So, Lord, I just give Leslie to you. I've, I've been bothered about you, been talking about me, talking behind my back, smiling in my face all the time, trying to take my place, the backstabber. <laughs> and, uh, Lord, I just, I, just, I just give Leslie to you. And then go on about your business. Act like the Lord's got Leslie. And then do what the Bible says. Now, you can't do this unless... See, the word got to be talking to you. And it's natural, like when you, you can really pray for your enemies. It's hard when you're doing it in your own strength. But, but when you're meditating on this word, you say, Lord, you know, I'm, I'm praying for Leslie. I pray, Lord, that you bless her. And, man, I have seen things happen when people just change their attitude. And in some cases... God will move them out of your way. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, but the point is, you don't try to handle it. You don't render evil for evil. When, when you're cursed, what we do is we bless. And that's not natural. We just do it because it's our nature to do. A couple more scriptures. You getting some out of this? Yes. Don't be afraid, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. ESV says, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. New Century Version says, God did not give us a spirit that makes us afraid, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. I love this. In righteousness, you shall be established. See, when you establish yourself that you are the righteousness of God in Christ, which means you're not guilty. Say, I'm not guilty. I'm, I'm approved. I'm accepted. I'm well-pleasing to the Lord. See, that's what you're established in when you're established in righteousness. And guess what? When you're established in righteousness... You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror it shall not. Sound like Psalm 91 to me. Terror, it shall not come near you. Who glory to God. You shall not fear when you are what? Established in what? Right. Righteousness. See, because blessings are on the head of the righteous. <laughs> See, you walk around with blessings on your head. Yes, Glory to God. I like um, in the Holman... Christian study Bible, it says, you, sh you will be established on a foundation of righteousness. Say, I, I am established on a foundation of righteousness. Thank you, Lord. Say, that means I'm acceptable to God. I'm well-pleasing to God. 
I am approved. I am, approved. I am not guilty. guilty. There is no, no condemnation for me, for me. Because, I because I am the righteousness of God, righteousness of God. in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Jesus, became Jesus became sin that I would become, I would become the, righteousness of God. the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessings are on my head. Psalm 91, 5, you will not fear the terror of the night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. This covers you. Day and night, you're covered. Blessed coming in, blessed going out, whatever you put your hand to, prosper. Glory to God. No evil will befall you. Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling because he gives his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Here it says, you shall not be afraid of the what? Terror by night. What else? Nor of the arrow that flies by day. Nor of the coronavirus that stalks in darkness. Nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but say, it will not come near me. Put your name in there. It will not come near Al. You said you're righteous, right? The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. See, we're being bold today. We're bold as a lion. A lion ain't afraid of nobody. You remember that lion? A Christian ran on, on, up on a lion, face to face with a lion. The Christian said, Lord, he prayed. Lord, I pray that this is a Christian line. <laughs> and that lion got on his knees, and that lion said, Father, thank you for this food that I'm about to receive. May it be for the nourishment of my body. <laughs> he got what he prayed for. He got a, <laughs> he got a Christian lion, praise God. When you're a lion, man is bold. The righteous are bold as a lion. Thank you, Lord. Every head body, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray that seeds of the word that have been planted in our hearts, Lord, will grow into a mighty harvest. Lord, we internalize this. We, we meditate on this. We understand that you've got us covered if we just let you, if we just let you handle the situations of life, that there's nothing to worry about, Lord. There's nothing to be afraid of, that you've got us covered. Oh, so much peace that we have. It guards our hearts and minds. <clears throat> Thank you that we have the help of the Holy Spirit. You left us a great helper that will establish us in these truths and remind us, bring to our remembrance whatsoever has been said unto us from the Word of God. If you're here today and you say, I want that kind of protection, I want that kind of assurance, I want that kind of boldness, how can I become righteous? You don't earn it. The good news is you don't earn it. All you do is receive righteousness as a gift, and as soon as you make Jesus, you say yes to Jesus, making him the Lord of your life. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You, with, with your heart, you believe unto righteousness. You don't work unto righteousness. You believe unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made. 
unto salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, you want to make him Lord today, just repeat this after me. Say, dear God, I believe that you sent Jesus to die on a cross for me. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead for me. And I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. God is my Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, welcome to the family of God. You are born again. You became a new creation in Christ Jesus. You became the righteousness of God and instantly. By no work of your own, blessings are on your head. And I want you to know the things in your life. Now, not everything's going to change instantly. You got changed instantly on the inside. But if you stay with this word and you keep hearing the gospel, you keep hearing the good news, I guarantee you, your family won't recognize you. You won't recognize yourself in 90 days. If you, I give you this 90-day challenge. Just keep tuning in to this a live stream every week. If you do it for 90 days, I'm telling you, that's just 13 weeks. You, anybody can do that. And uh, you just tune in and you just keep hearing and keep hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. When you hear about what Jesus did for you on the cross, everything that I described today, everything that I taught is because of the finished work. It, it's based on the finished work of Jesus on the cross. He did it all. He finished the work on the cross. You are already blessed. You already have victory. So you don't have to fight for victory. You're fighting from a place of vic victory that Jesus won for you on the cross. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, what I'd like to do is send you some information to help you understand what happened when you prayed that prayer and, and to, to give you some information to help get your new life with the Lord off to a good start. So what I'd like for you to do is just, if you're watching on our online platform, click the live prayer button, and there's a live prayer button somewhere on your screen. You click that, you'll enter into a private chat area with one of our volunteers. They'll take your information, okay? Uh, all we need is your first name, email address, and we will get that information to you. If you need prayer, that volunteer will also be happy to pray with you, okay? If you're watching on uh, Facebook, just send us a, a, a direct message. Let us know that you prayed that prayer, and um, we'll get that information to you. Just uh, and give us your email address, and we will get that information to you right away. Praise God. Amen. If you're watching on YouTube, um, I'd encourage you not to put your email in the um, comment section, but just um, send it to summitchurchatme.com, and we'll get that information to you as well. Let's give God praise right now for everybody that made Jesus the Lord of their life. Praise God for what we received in the Word today. Amen. And uh, we're going to receive communion right now, thanking, thanking him. Uh, thinking about the finished work of Jesus on the cross and all of this freedom from worry and freedom from fear is all made possible because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. All righty. Thank you, Jesus. Good times ahead. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good times ahead. Amen. All right. Yeah, we can get some help. If you don't have, if you didn't receive your communion elements, here comes somebody with, uh, yeah. Amen. Anybody else need? Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. You see Mark Rosen in the house? All right. He's going to get a couple more to take home. <laughs> I'm messing with him. Praise God. All right. Amen. No, he's there over there serving. Look at that. Amen. 
Hallelujah. I remember I, st- I was going to a church in Tulsa, and uh, it had just started. Actually, it was before the, the church started, and this pastor, Dr. Ken Stewart, and uh, you probably remember the, Dr. Stewart, and we were there when they, they first, he's not pastoring there anymore, but he started having Thursday Bible class, then it turned into Sunday. And so, um, but there was no, no help, and uh, he just uh, asked for somebody to grab the bucket to pass it around for the offering. So I got up, and I was an usher there ever since. <laughs> it's just about making yourself available. Amen. So, Mark, you don't know what you got yourself into when you picked up that. (laughs) Amen. But it's just about making yourself available. You see a need, and that's what Mark did, saw that some people didn't have the communion element, so he went up and grabbed it and passed it to people. It's just, amen, it's easy to help. See a need, and you don't have to fast and pray, you know, for 30 or 40 days. (laughs) <laughs> go without food and water. Uh, just say, Pastor, where can I help? And I, I want to talk to my son and family right now. Um, after I do this, after I do this, you got your bread at home? Crackers, whatever, grape juice. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you that the work is finished. Thank you that we walk by faith and not by sight. We thank you that no matter what's going on in the world, that we are covered. And by Jesus' stripes, we were healed. And Lord, we thank you that, Jesus, you were raised far above all principality, power, might, dominion, and every name That is name. Jesus has been given a name that is above every name. The name of Jesus is above the coronavirus. The coronavirus, COVID-19, was dealt with on the cross. Whoo! By Jesus' stripes. Say this, by Jesus' stripes. Hold the bread up. I was healed. I have been raised with Christ. I am seated seated with Christ Christ. far above above the coronavirus. coronavirus. It shall not not come near me. me. Ooh, hallelujah. Let's partake. See right there? You got an internal. You've partaken of health. See, God give us these physical reminders. He had a reminder, do this, Jesus said, in remembrance of me. We're remembering what Jesus did for you on the cross. Hallelujah. We remember that we're healed. When they're saying all this bad stuff on the news, we remember. Shoot, I take I partake of communion. And what that communion is, is talking to me right now. See, the communion, see, communion will talk to you when you hear the bad news. And you, you start hearing, oh, glory to God, hallelujah. I'm healed. Because it's paid for. Hmm? What do you think about Somebody, you paid the bill off, and somebody uh, sending you some bill in the mail, and you know you paid it off, and you got the receipt. Huh? Sometimes, you, you know, you might have to, you know, tell them. I say, well, we're not sure. We're like, I got the receipt. See, we got, we got the receipt. First Peter 2.24, we got the receipts. We got all the receipts. Jesus finished the work. Oh, you might catch that virus. I got receipts. <laughs> I got the receipt, praise God. <laughs> it 
know, when you, when you got a lot of bills and stuff, how I many you know, like, you don't, you don't want to look at them? <laughs> you don't really want to look at the books. And the books is like, you got all the stuff you owe. You really don't, you don't really want to look at it right. when you're in the red. But when you're in the black, you're not ashamed to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> look at this. Look at, look at what I got in the account. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Look into the perfect law of liberty. Don't be a forgetful here, but a doer of the work. Woo, hallelujah. See all the wonderful things that God has for you. If this had a bunch of bad news, would you, would you want to read it? It tell you how ugly and how bad and unworthy and how broken. And, how, and, you know, people read the Bible like that. And people, and, 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 and watching bad news all down on the news, it's like they love it. You know what? There's a reason for that because the natural, the flesh is attracted to bad news. Feed on the good news. Hallelujah. That's the reason why people, a lot of people don't go to church because they beat up. They beat up enough in them here streets. And then, they, they, and then they're going to go to the church and get beat up too? And some people, they're tired of getting whipped. We ought to hear some good news. Pastor, the Bible is not all about good news. Yes, it is. The gospel is. When you understand what covenant you're in. And even the old covenant was about good news if you, if you read it right. Because God put provision for them when they sinned. He, he, he set up the tabernacle system so he can still bless them. Even and temporarily, he could set up something temporary in order to bless them until Jesus came. He knew they couldn't keep the law. So he said, okay, look here. We're going to set up this tabernacle. He's going to bring these animals' blood. They're going to they're gonna be temporary to, until uh, my son comes. And when they, bought, they, when they brought the animals, in the priest, in the blood, they would, they would uh, have to bring an animal. And watch this. And the lamb would have to be spotless. Guess who that represents? Jesus, the lamb. He's referred to as the lamb slain, what, before the foundation of the world, right? So the animal that they brought, the priest would do what? Like, like the, the offerer that had sin would bring this animal once a year, and the animal would be inspected. Guess who wouldn't be expected? Ex ex what I'm saying? Who wouldn't be inspected? Who wouldn't be inspected? The person. The, see, the priest didn't say, let me see if you really repented. Let me see a few tears. Let me, let me, let me make sure you're remorseful and sorry. And not, mm -mm. It didn't have nothing to do with the person. The lamb had to be perfect, not the person. The priest examined the lamb. The lamb, and see, the lamb was perfect. And so all, and, the, and what would happen, they would, they would kill, the lamb would be killed, okay? And then the person would lay his hands on the lamb. Symbolically, all of the spotlessness of the lamb, all the purity of the lamb, all the, if you will, righteousness of the lamb was transferred to the person. All of the sin of the person was transferred to the lamb. That was a type of Jesus. And Jesus on the cross became sin. He took our sin and we got his righteousness. And Jesus is the anti-type. He is the perfect lamb that was spotless. 
a lamb without blemish. So when, when we sin, God doesn't look at you to see if you really repented. He's not waiting on your confession. He looked at the lamb. When you sin, he looks at Jesus. And the lamb is perfect. That priest would take the blood of that, of that spotless lamb and sprinkle it on the altar. Jesus' blood was shed for us for the remission of our sin. This cup represents that blood. Let's partake together. Do this in remembrance of Jesus. We remember Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You got something? Okay. Okay. Amen. Can you come before the announcement? So I just wanted to encourage you. This was on my heart to encourage parents with younger kids and just a couple of quick testimonials um, uh, in reference to our children when they were younger and two incidents occurred and um, really helped set my course as a parent and the one being um, when our first uh, child was going into kindergarten and um, I was very, very protective and, you know, like didn't want her out of our presence and things of that nature and one particular morning as she was home, um, I had such a peace and I realized, um, you know, that there was a difference that she was home and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And, and I remembered whenever she would go to school, I was the opposite. And so the Lord spoke to me and said, so you um, don't need me <laughs> when you, she's home, but you need me when she's away. Hmm. And what that did for me, I, it reminded me and let me know that I needed to trust God not only with her in my presence, but out of my presence. Because what I learned later is that more accidents happened in the home than away. And so, I, and so that just taught me that I, God, we want God to be present with our children no matter where they are. And so I just want to encourage you as a mom and as a father, or as a parent, that God is with our children and trust that no matter where they are. And God loves them more than we ever can love them. And then later, um, our son, when he was in high school, first, his first freshman year, he had text. And I remember so vi vividly as I was leaving our audition, um, I was going somewhere, but the text came in and says, Mom, the school has just got noticed that we're on lockdown because we have a bomb threat. And the, the first thing that came from my hand to that phone was, I plead the blood. Now, what, what, what blessed me, number one, was the fact the word began to speak to my heart because I knew that God was with him, and even though I wasn't, there was nothing I could do where I was. If I tried to speed to the school and get there, if it was a real bomb and if it was going to go off, it was going to go off whether I was there or not. But God was there. And so I, I said, I plead the blood of Jesus. And these parents were in the, in the parking lot crying and wanting to get into their, what are you going to do? But God is with them. God is greater. So I want you to be inspired and encouraged and know that where our kids are, no matter where your children are, God's hand of protection, plead the blood of Jesus, know that he loves them more than we ever can. He's mm -hmm. with them when we're not. And they will oh, fulfill man. destiny and purpose. I declare it over our kids. I declare it over your children. And I thank the Lord for what he's doing in their lives, through them, and with them. And we are excited about what God is doing in this generation and beyond. Amen? Amen. 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 Be encouraged. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're, um, we're treating this like um, a church plant. We, and we have new people coming in, and we're excited about that. And um, <clears throat> So we need, we need help. We need workers. So... If it's on your heart to be uh, to help us, please contact us. You could email us at um, summitchurchatme.com. We are looking for people in the physical house to do some things. Amen. And uh, we, we do need help. We need assistance. And you may have a gift to... Uh, we're looking for singers. We're looking for 
um, band members, children's, you know, our children, we are not, uh, we're not in children's ministry right now for temporarily. And, uh, but uh, we will need children workers at a later time. Um, but right now, biggest need is in our music ministry and in um, the media area, okay? So um, we can use your assistance, amen, to make the online experience better for everybody. And um, amen. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Say, I am. I am. It take y'all a little while to get up. Y'all want to stay here a while? <laughs> y'all want some more? I can go some more now. Say, I'm greatly blessed. I'm greatly blessed. Highly, favored. Highly favored. Deeply loved. Deeply loved. And totally righteous. totally righteous. And I am destined to reign. Destined to reign. Because, of because of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 